This video is going to demonstrate how to perform base flow record estimation using the PART computer program that USGS makes available on its website. First step is to download the software from USGS. Here's the link and you download the software. It is a self-extracting executable and once you finish downloading it and open it then you'll see that it's uh, just going to pick some uh, location to extract the files to and you need to make note of where it extracts the files to because um, it's not a program that actually installs itself and registers itself as software on the operating system it just sort of uh, unzips and then it's a very simple DOS based program that you have to manually execute so I'm going to extract it to a folder that I'll call part and I'll unzip that uh, the next thing for me to do is get the data that I want to analyze and you can go get the data from a variety of places one of the easiest to use is the National Water Information System and if you already know the site number then you can type that in or you can of course uh, browse through the window and identify the site since I already know the location I want to do I'll type that in and it automatically zooms to the location I click on the tag for it and access the data what I need to download is the daily cubic discharge, uh, discharge in cubic feet per second. And for this site, you see it goes from 1960 to 2012. Um, so I'll click on that and select only the, oh, that's a little weird. Let me start over again. Let me try that again. Um, <clears throat> I want the daily data, not daily statistics. I, I don't know uh, why you get a different interface for the two, but this is what I'm familiar with. I'll select the discharge and deselect temperature and specific conductivity. Uh, you can see that the period of record for discharge is from 1960 to 2013. I just want that to be tab separated data and I'll select that I would like it to begin in 1960 and go through August of I'm sorry August 1st of 1960 going through the present. Click on go and it'll prepare the uh, text data. I'm going to right click, save as. I'm going to put it in that original uh, part folder that I created just now. Programs and sample data is where it needs to be. And I'm going to call this hogue.txt. Uh, one other thing I need to note about this site is I need to make sure that I make note of the drainage area because I'm going to have to type that into another file separately. So 15.9 square miles. And let me go ahead and do that now. I'll go to the C part folder and it's programs and sample data where I put my information and there's this text file called station and I need to add the name of the file that I'm going to be executing and the drainage area. So this is hogue.txt. Put in some spaces here and it was 15.9 miles. You don't have to put in any of the other information. That's optional. I'll save it. All right. This screen folder basically will screen the data to make sure that it's okay for executing, but I haven't noticed any functionality in the screening program that the main analysis program doesn't provide you before the analysis. So I'll skip screen and go straight to part. Um, when you double click on part it asks you which file it needs to be analyzing and the file that we're going to use is hogue.txt. You'll see it gives a little report of the results. The problem with this station is that there's a gap in the data and so you can't run the analysis on the entire period if there's a gap. Uh, so I can run it on the first period when there's data and then the second period that there's data um, or you can just run it on the period where there is data. You may be using this for a variety of different things. Um, I'll show you the reports that it generates here in a moment, but what I'm going to have it do is start in 1993 and go through uh, 2012 because that is the period of uninterrupted data. Uh, it says there's a break and that's probably referring, referring to uh, this here. Uh, so let me just actually do 2011 Okay, so we're doing hogue.txt 
and the uh, the period of record I'm going to do is from 1993 through 2011. All right. So now it's uh, concluded everything. Uh, it gives me a little report. And all this information is going to be repeated in the text files that it creates. Um, but in the period, uh, the overall average in terms of CFS, it's given me the mean base flow. And of course, that's going to vary seasonally, and every month there's going to be a, a variation. Also, it expresses it in terms of a depth, inches per year. Because it knows the area, it can convert a flow rate into a depth. And that's often useful if you're comparing base flows to precipitation depths and evaporation depths and so on. So I'll terminate the program and then take a look at some of the files that it's created. If I want to have the uh, um, summary here for the entire period of record, then um, it shows me that for the 15.9 square mile, the, uh, the mean stream flow it gives me the mean base flow, the percentage of the base flow relative to the mean stream flow uh, on a quarterly basis. And so this is seasonal summaries. It's giving the stream flow in inches and then the base flow. So for example, in the well, winter of 1993, 10.17 uh, inches of stream flow. And of that, 4.97 was base flow. It gives the annual totals. Uh, you can also get a monthly summary by year comparing stream flow to base flow. And so this is a very useful program. It even gives you the daily record if you want to go all the way through that, comparing the uh, base flow and the stream flow. Um, but that's just a, a basic summary. The thing to keep in mind is that once you download the data, you have to uh, make sure to update the uh, watershed area in the station.txt.